Hi, I'm Nick with Zingtree. This is the second video in our Zingtree Basics series where I'm walking you through the basics of building out your conversational workflows. Today, we'll be covering creating and navigating trees. You'll create and manage all of your trees through the Zingtree portal. Remember that super users, billing administrators, and authors are the roles that can create and manage trees. When you log into Zingtree, you'll be taken to the My Trees page. This is where you'll see the list of all the trees in your organizations. If you've set up multiple organizations, you can navigate between them by using the drop-down menu in the top right. There's a couple different ways to filter your trees. Using the search bar, you can filter by typing in a tree name or a tree tag. You can also use the drop-down menu to filter your trees by the author. To create a new tree, click the Create New Tree button. In the pop-up menu, enter the tree name. If you're using multiple organizations, use the drop-down to choose which org you want the tree to be under. Remember that trees can only exist in one org at a time. The Optional Details tab allows you to add a description to the tree and change the language for the authors. If you're using the Agent Portal, you can hide trees from the Agent view until you're ready to publish by checking the checkbox. The Style tab allows you to customize the look and color scheme of your trees. All of the customization settings can be changed after you create the tree, so we won't worry about it right now. We'll cover customizing trees in more detail in a later video in this series. Once you've created your tree, you'll be taken to the main editing page. You'll see this page is split into two sections. On the right, you have all the editable fields for the node type you're using, and on the left, you have all the nodes in your tree. You can switch between list view and designer view by using these buttons. Each view has their benefits, but really it boils down to personal preference as to which you use. I personally am a visual person, and using designer view makes it easier for me to visualize my tree as I build. But there are plenty of folks at Zingtree who love to use the list view because they can see all their nodes, node content, and node connections in one place. As you get more comfortable building, you'll likely switch back and forth between the two. Any author in your org can create new trees, but if you'd like multiple authors to have editing access to a tree, you'll need to add them as collaborators. To do this, open the Tools drop-down and select Assign Collaborators. In the pop-up menu, select the username of the author you'd like to add as a collaborator. Next, you'll choose what level of access you'd like the author to have in the tree. Administrator access will give the author you're adding the ability to make changes to the tree, delete the tree, and add or manage the permissions of other collaborators. Administrators also review and publish changes when using the Push Live feature. We'll talk more about Push Live a bit later in this video. Editor access means authors can make changes to a tree, but can't delete it or manage collaborator permissions. View only access means an author can only view the tree. Now let's circle back to Push Live. Push Live is a feature designed to help you manage changes to your trees without causing disruption to your agents. By default, your Zingtree will update each time an edit is made and saved. If you need to make frequent edits to an already published tree and don't want to risk confusing your agents with real-time updates, or you want an administrator to sign off on any changes to the tree before they're published, then Push Live is going to be important to you. What it does is allow you to make all the changes you need and then publish them at a later time. To set this up, go into your tree and click the Push Live button. On the pop-up menu, you'll select Push Live a second time. You'll be prompted to enter text under Release Notes. We recommend giving the tree some sort of version name or change description because it'll make tracking historical changes or reverting back to a previous version easier. Since this is the first time I'm publishing this tree, I'm going to go with Initial Publication and then click Create New Live Version. Now that I've published the live version, notice the publishing URL has been updated. The URL for a live tree will always have three zeros appended to the end of the tree ID. Back on the main tree editing page, you can see the push live button now just says live and has a green check mark next to it. The check mark tells you there are no new changes to the development version of the tree. Once you make changes and save them, you'll notice the check is replaced by an asterisk. This is your indicator there are changes waiting to be published. Follow the same process to publish a live tree version of the tree to publish any updates. You can easily preview your tree by using the Preview Tree button. All of the nodes and buttons will work exactly the same as the live version the agents use. 
As you make edits to a tree, ZingTree keeps track of the changes in the snapshot tool. This is especially helpful if you accidentally delete a node or need to restore a tree to a previous version. To access your tree's version history, go to Tools and select Version History. From here, you'll see a list of all the edits, when they were made, who made them, and if you're using Push Live, any release notes you've entered. Clicking Recover will restore the tree to that version. You can also click Copy on any previous version to create a new tree from that point. Copying trees can also help save time in your building process. For example, you may need three different product scripts that are basically the same flow. You can build a tree for the first product and then create two copies. From there, make whatever alterations you need to the copies to fit the other two products. To do this, start by selecting the tree you want to copy and then select Tools, Copy Tree. You can rename the tree and choose which organization you want it to be under. When you're done, click Create Copy. You can also export trees as JSON files. Two reasons you might do this are to create backups of all your trees or to create copies of your trees in different languages. If you're operating in some place like Quebec, Canada, you may need to have trees in English and in French. Exporting your tree as a JSON will allow you to create the tree in one language, have somebody edit the text of the JSON file to the other language, and then import it back into Zingtree. For more on importing and exporting trees, visit our Help Center. If you ever need to change the name of your tree or move it to a different org, you can do that by clicking Settings. On the Basic tab of the pop-up menu, you'll see places to update the name and organizations. You can add tags to your tree from the Tags menu. Type in the tag you want and then Enter. If you ever need to delete a tree, go to Tools and then Delete Tree. This covers the basics of creating trees and navigating their settings. Check out our Help Center for articles on any of the topics we covered today, and check out the next video in our basic series, which is all about content nodes.